Welcome back to Hot Rod High School, located here in the Edmonds School District Automotive Training Center. In today's episode, we are going to be using this Hunter on-car brake lathe to machine a disc brake while it's still attached to the vehicle. So coveralls on, safety glasses on, let's go to work. Let's go ahead and get familiar with this piece of equipment. So just like on our other brake lathes, we have a cutter head, but it operates a little bit differently. In order to move the, cutter head, the cutters inward and outward, what we're gonna do is loosen the handles on one side, and then we'll turn this handle and the one that's been loosened is the one that will then start moving whenever we uh, uh, turn the, the handle there. And we tighten this back down into place. Now, if I loosen the opposite side, now that's the one that'll begin moving when I turn the handle. So it operates a little bit differently than our other brake lathe. It is also controlled by this little touch screen here so we can go through and control all the different functions on it. And then here is the portion that actually spins the brake. And we're gonna have to use one of our adapters, which we'll insert onto the cutter or onto this, uh, the turntable there, which will allow the brake to actually start spinning. Okay, our first step here is our setup. So I'm going to hit this little button right here. It says change vehicle, and we gotta select a vehicle. So I'll hit that select a vehicle button. We'll choose our manufacturer. This happens to be a Saturn that we're working on today. So we'll choose that. It's a 2008 and it's an Outlook and we'll be working on the rear brake on this vehicle today. So now it tells us which adapter we need to find. It's that one with the blue ring on it. So we'll find that adapter and then attach it to the front of the machine. Okay, now we're ready to install that adapter with the blue ring on it onto the front of the machine. We'll take and just slide it into place just like that. And then there is a locking nut. We're going to start hand tightening down into place. And now we'll just use our wrench to give it just a little extra tighten. Hold it on to the machine. Now that the adapter is installed, we're ready to set this tool up onto our brake. So one thing that has to happen in order to machine our brake is that we gotta take our brake caliper out of the way before we can get started machining. I realized that I had have my uh, caliper hanging there just by the brake line. You never want to have a caliper hanging by the brake line because that can damage it. So I just took a bungee cord and hung the caliper off to the side. So our brake caliper is out of the way and that is very important because we need this opening where the brake caliper was sitting to be able to install our cutter head. But look at this, our cutter head is set up in this direction, but the area that's gonna be cut is over here. It's 180 degrees off. Well, no problem for this tool. So we'll take and simply spin it over. And now our cutter head is mounted on the correct side to be able to get in to where that brake is. So. Uh, if you're working on, you know, the opposite side of the car, then 
like if I was going to go work on over on the driver's side of the car, I just flip this over and be able to machine either side of it. Okay, now that we have our correct head all set up on here and we're ready to install this onto the vehicle, we'll just take it and run this forward. And just like so, now the cutter head is set up and attached to the vehicle. And now we just need to take the lug nuts we used to take off the tire assembly earlier, and we'll put in all those lug nuts and tighten them down. And then we'll be ready to begin the process of machining our brake. Okay, now that all of the lug nuts have been run down, finger tight, we'll take and tighten all the lug nuts up using that kind of crisscross star pattern. Make sure they're all nice and tight. And now the machine has been installed and we're ready to start the cut. So I will take a look here at our display. So I'll back out of here. And now I can start the process of my cut. So the first thing up, oh, it says my emergency stop button has been pressed on this thing. So I got to go ahead and release that button, which is this guy right here before it'll go. Okay. Okay. Start. Hit okay. And now it started going through and turning the brake. I'm going to put the speed up a little bit higher. And it, you can see this little thing right here says it's compensating so it's making sure that this is turning perfectly it's completely in alignment before we get, begin the process of cutting so we're almost done with our compensation in the old school ones of these you had to do this by hand it was a real pain but uh, in this model of it it's done automatically for us and now we're fully compensated and we are ready to begin the process of cutting this brake one component that I left out was this handle right here, which is what, when I turn this handle, that's going to move the cutter head in and out. So now I can open up the jaws of the cutter head and run it back in to make contact with the brake. So just like we talked about before, I'll leave this one loose and I'll open it up so that that moves outward so I can get around the brake, tighten this back up, loosen the other one, and then open that up so it'll be big enough to go around the outside of the brake as well. Tighten it back into place. And now I can turn my red handle here and move the jaws in around the brake. Okay, and we got the jaw down in around the brake. And now we can use, we can go through and make contact. So I'm gonna do this inside one first and just make contact with the inside and then tighten it up. Same with the outside, loosen, we'll make contact. Okay, 
and tighten it back up. And now I can turn my red handle and drive the cutter head back in. Okay, we got it all the way driven in. And so now we're ready to go through and make our cut. And on this tool, it has this little wing nut here that attaches to the drive handle. And all we gotta do is tighten up the wing nut and this will engage our drive handle and start it automatically turning. And so now It'll go through and begin the process of machining our disc brake. I'm going to actually increase the speed on that a little bit more. And now we can just wait while it machines the brake for us. gotten almost down to the end of our cut and we can see where there's that dark spot on the brake there and that just means that I didn't go quite deep enough for this brake it's slightly warped and so uh, we're gonna have to do a second cut on this to get it all the way cleaned up all the way through which is just fine that has to happen from time to time so we'll stop our brake for a second here and yeah you can see pretty well how we have you know a nice clean finish over here and then you can see the area of the brake where we didn't quite make contact with the cutter so we're going to go through now and do one more cut with this brake to get a nice clean finish all the way around And it's going to want to recompensate before it allows me to make my cut. We're now compensated. Okay. So now I'm just going to once again run my cutter head in. We'll get close to the back of the brake. Take and loosen this and move my cutter head in. A little bit further, tighten it up, run it to the very back, I'm going to loosen this and go just a little portion of a mark more just so we can take and make it a nice clean smooth cut on this thing and now just like the last time I'm going to tighten up that locking nut and start that automatic feed. And once again, just like with any other lathe or any other machine that you operate in this shop, you need to stay here with the machine while it is operating. At no point should you walk away. This is not a time to talk with your friends or anything like that. You're gonna stay here, watch the tool work and make absolute sure that nothing goes wrong or that nobody comes and touches it or you know, anything else could happen with this tool while it's operating. So we're just gonna have to wait for just a couple of minutes more and then we should have a nice, clean, smooth finish on our brake and then we'll have to measure it because on all these we want to measure both before and after you finish making your cut. So I brought you back in and take another look at it. Cutter's uh, gotten through the center point. It's almost done. So we're almost finished up performing our cut on this brake.
So we finished up making our cut on this break and it is absolutely gorgeous. Perfectly smooth, ready for that new set of brake pads to go in there. And as always, I wanna go through and measure our brake with our micrometer to see what our final reading is on this. We wanna be measuring these brakes both before the cut and after the cut and always making sure that we stay above its minimum discard thickness. And let's see, we got a reading here of 745 thousandths of an inch on our micrometer. So we could record that down. And then last couple of things to remember. So obviously we would uh, take off all the lug nuts to remove the tool from the wheel. We need to reinstall and torque down our brake caliper and reinstall the wheel onto the assembly as well. And then this little um, wing nut right here, make sure that you loosen that up so that the next time that the machine goes to start, we don't have our cutter head automatically moving outward. Okay, and that is using an on-car brake lathe to machine a disc brake while it's still attached to the vehicle.